What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be learning about protocol extensions and how you can use them to genericize your code. It's a bit of an abstract topic, so we're going to jump right into it so we can see it in action. So drop a like down below, hit subscribe, open up Xcode, and let's start by creating a new project. So we're going to create a new project here. It's going to be a iOS app. We're going to stick with the app template. And I'm going to go ahead and call this protocol ext for extensions. Save the project wherever you'd like. I'm going to toss it onto my desktop here. And first things first, let me go ahead and expand my Xcode window as soon as Xcode decides to load. And we'll possibly also give it a run in the simulator. Now, one thing you'll notice is I'm running Xcode 13 beta here. However, this topic is applicable to any version of Xcode. So we're going to pop into our view controller here. Let me bump up the font size and let's talk about protocol extensions, AKA default implementations. So instead of just talking through theory, I want to do a practical example. So I came across a app recently where every single view controller is designed in the storyboard. In other words, each storyboard uh, contains a single view controller scene. So the app has, let's say 10 view controllers. So it has 10 storyboards. Now, instead of, you know, allowing the developer to instantiate each view controller uh, by hand manually, there is a way we can generically use a protocol to do that. So let's go ahead and create a protocol and stick with me here. And this will all make sense in a little bit. We're going to call it storyboarded. And we're going to go ahead and toss two things inside of here. Now, anything that is storyboarded, uh, hypothetically, has a storyboard name, right? So any view controller, uh, that is storyboarded has a storyboard name and this simply refers to the storyboard file that that view controllers actual UI resides in now every single storyboarded view controller we want to be able to instantiate it too and it would kind of be silly to have to write this instantiate method method every single time so the instantiate method which is a tongue twister is going to return to us a UI view controller. Now we're going to go ahead and create a second view controller. So let me just go ahead and call it second VC. I'm going to do it right inside of here since we're not going to put too much stuff in here. And we're going to go ahead and make it storyboarded. Now you'll notice when we make it storyboarded, let's see if it decides to pop up storyboarded just like that. It's going to yell at us when we try to build. Uh, and that's expected because we aren't conforming right now to name or this instantiate function, which should also be static. Now, this is going to get incredibly verbose if we want to do this for, I don't know, let's say 40 view controllers. So we're going to be smarter about this. So let me comment this out temporarily and let's create an extension off of this protocol. So we're going to create an extension off of storyboarded, but we're going to be a little more intelligent about this. We're going to say extend the storyboarded protocol where the thing that conforms to storyboarded is something of type UI view controller or anything that is subclassing UI view controller. Now inside of here, we're going to actually do the implementation and sometimes the autocomplete doesn't like to cooperate. So simply go ahead and type it out yourself. So we're going to say the default storyboard name is main.storyboard and this is just a default placeholder. This is the thing we're going to want to have to override or implement in every storyboard or every view controller case. But the thing that's gonna remain consistent throughout each of those conformances is the static instantiate function here. So this guy here should find the storyboard associated with the storyboard name, and this thing is actually called storyboard name, and it should go ahead and create the view controller with the ID. Now, how do we actually do that? So first, we need to grab a hold of the storyboard, and the way we're gonna do that is by saying UI storyboard, and this is going to get created with a name and a bundle. Now the name is simply going to be, you guessed it, storyboard name. And what is the bundle? That is the bundle of your app, AKA your main application. So you can say bundle.main, or you can go ahead and short it, uh, shorten it like I did there, just do main. And now that we have the storyboard, we're going to go ahead and say return storyboard, and we're going to instantiate a view controller with a uh, identifier. Now, where the heck do we get this identifier from? Well, we actually already have it. We're going to use the name of the view controller as the identifier. So stick with me here because this is going to get maybe a, a slight bit of confusion for some folks. So we're going to say string describing self dot self. Now, what is this saying? So we're basically saying self with an uppercase S refers to the static member of whatever the UI view controller is that we are extending. 
right? Because we're writing an extension here for storyboard did, which is a protocol we declared right above. We're extending its functionality with a default implementation where the conformer is of type UI view controller. So the capital S self refers to the static type and then dot self is the lowercase. So let's say in this case, we have second VC up here. This would be second VC dot self, lowercase s for the second self. And we're basically getting a string that describes it. So in other words, the string that we would get back for second VC is simply second VC. So let me go ahead and uncomment this. And now you're gonna notice if you do a command B, you're not gonna get an error here anymore. And the reason you're not gonna get an error here anymore is because we provided a default implementation of storyboarded for every single UI view controller uh, type and subclass that conforms to storyboarded. Now we can in fact go ahead and implement these one by one if we needed to change their implementation. For the case of the storyboard name, you'll wanna change this between UI view controllers in our case. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this second VC. We're gonna to have to create another storyboard with this name. Let's go ahead and also override view did load for good measure. We'll say super view did load, just so we know this is a view controller. And let's actually hook this up with the storyboard and see it in action. So the way that this is gonna play out is in our first controller, which initially gets displayed when the app launches, we're gonna create a button. And stick with me here, hopefully this isn't too all over the place. We're gonna go ahead and give it a frame 00, 250. I'm gonna go ahead and add this as a sub view by calling it add sub view button, pretty simple, nothing too crazy going on. We're gonna go ahead and say set title is going to be, go to second for the normal state. We also wanna go ahead and center the button. So I'm gonna say button.center is view.center. And don't forget to do two more things, which is set a title color. We'll go ahead and say label. And finally, attach an actual action to the button tap. So we're gonna say add target, self, selector, did tap, button and we're going to go ahead and say this is for touch up inside just like that so we're going to go ahead and create this like that and how do we actually get a hold of the second view controller well we first need to create a storyboard that's titled second vc uh, which is what we have called it here so we can actually go ahead and simply grab this and actually let me actually call the second storyboard so we don't confuse the naming here so we'll call the second storyboard and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is right click our project here and hit new file. We're gonna search for main.storyboard, or rather storyboard, I should say, not main.storyboard. We'll select it here. Now this is pretty critical. Make sure you give it the name that you provided in the static storyboard name property. Go ahead and create it, and it's gonna give you a default controller in here when it is displayed. So let's go ahead and select it at the top and open up the attributes inspector. And there are two things we wanna do in here first. We're going to update the class and associate it with second VC. Second, we're going to give it the same storyboard ID as the class name, so second VC. And third, we're just going to design it a little bit so we can uh, make it look a little nicer. So let's give it a background color. Maybe we'll stick with, eh, that's an ugly color. We'll stick with this nice blue. I'm going to hit the plus at the top here, and we'll grab a label, and I'll also toss it here just for good measure. Let's go ahead and center align it on the right, and we're going to say this is second and let me also go ahead and bump up the font size here so it also looks a tad bit nicer we'll stick with the system font maybe we'll make it bold and we'll make it a size of 35 and finally don't forget to give some constraints to this so it's laid out we're just going to center it horizontally and vertically by checking these two boxes at the bottom right here go ahead and hit add to constraints and we're good to go in the storyboard now Back in our view controller, the last thing we need to do is when this button is tapped, instead of having to remember you know, that we have a view controller called second VC, we've already connected this controller through this generic instantiate function, uh, this protocol instantiate function, I should say, to its relevant storyboard. So we can go ahead and say second VC is, we want a second view controller, and we're just gonna say go ahead and instantiate it. And this function under the hood is going to take care of it uh, from grabbing it from the storyboard and giving a controller back. And then finally, we're going to say, go ahead and present second VC animated true. 
So let me actually go ahead and run this in a simulator and then we'll talk through the benefits of why we went through this entire dance with this protocol and this extension and all this good stuff. There is a reason and it does make your life easier and you actually end up writing less code as a result of it. So stick with me in my super slow simulator here and we'll see this hopefully working end to end. So we expect to see a button in the middle that says go to second. And when we tap it, we should see that other blue view controller uh, present from the bottom. So I tap it and boom, there's other blue controller. We know that the UI is coming from the storyboard because that's where we set the label as well as this background color here. So definitely working end to end. So looking pretty good. So let's talk about the benefits of actually doing this. Well, for one, your storyboard name is set up in a way where it can be used to instantiate a controller if you provide the name. So we use the storyboarded protocol here on second VC. We explicitly provide the name of the storyboard. This is second storyboard, which is the name of this file here. And when we call the instantiate function from anywhere else, all that this is doing is under the hood, the storyboarded protocol implements instantiate in a generic manner. And the generic manner is basically get a storyboard from the project with the storyboard name that was supplied, main bundle, and then from that storyboard, instantiate a view controller where the identifier of the controller is the same name as the controller class. So in this case, our controller class is called second VC. And in the storyboard, we also gave this a storyboard ID. Let's see if I can go ahead and actually find it. Let me select the controller here. We actually gave it a storyboard ID of second VC. Now this is not to be confused with the class up here of second VC. That'll be necessary for connecting outlets and actions if you choose to go down that route. So the benefit is generic protocol implementations regardless of the conformer. And now the last thing I'll call out, and this is actually pretty interesting in my opinion, this is how a lot of the standard Swift library protocols are implemented. So if you ever wondered, uh, whenever you have a protocol where it doesn't actually make you do anything, so let's say we create a struct of some type of model, and you make it codable out of the box, and you say there's a string in here of type string. How come codable can simply make everything in here JSON encodable and decodable without us having to go ahead and do anything extra? And the reason is because Codable, just like our storyboarded protocol under the hood, has a default implementation through an extension. And that's how Codable is able to provide this functionality. So in other words, if we didn't provide a default implementation for this instantiate function, and if I did a command B, you're going to see this is going to start complaining, right? This is saying, do you want to add protocol stubs? Because it's saying, hey, you didn't instantiate or you didn't uh, write out the instantiate function where the storyboarded protocol says that it's going to have one. So we use the default implementation to avoid having to do the redundant uh, implementation across all the conformers. And that's basically protocol extensions, AKA default implementations in a nutshell. Hopefully this video was straightforward enough and you guys can see the benefit of how you can extend this to some pretty intricate functionality. Maybe I'll do some follow-up videos if you guys are interested in that. Leave a like down below if you haven't done so already. Hitting that like button really helps the video and channel out. Helps YouTube push the video to as many people as possible. Comment if you have any questions. Subscribe for more content. We're almost, I think we're actually just past 36k subs. I'd love to get to 40 as soon as we can. Uh, keep the channel going and growing together. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.